I'm Robin. Hi, I'm Eric. All right, well, so this is our 2005 Ford E350 Super Duty van. Um, it's actually a StarCraft Starlight. It was a shuttle bus, and uh, we have completely gutted it and converted it into our tiny house on wheels. We, like so many people, were looking at tiny houses and uh, container homes and, uh, you know, all kinds of different options and doing all the videos and watching everything. We kind of came across so many of the bus conversions and, you know, different things like that. And so we thought, well, heck, if we're going to have a tiny house, why not have one we can take with us <laughs> wherever we and bring it all over the world or all over the North America anyway. Well, and we but, thought uh, we, we were going to do this. We were looking to do the Sprinter thing, like yeah. a lot of people, because we thought the size, the stealth aspect. But when we started looking into that, they're so expensive and they're just, you know, they're good materials mechanically, but they're really expensive if something goes wrong. Right. And size-wise as well, we we are both fairly tall. I'm over six foot two. Robin's almost six feet tall. So the shuttle bus is wider, so it gives us room to have the bed going across the back and gives us a lot more flexibility with the uh, space. And it had basically from the back seat all the way to the back, almost 13 feet uh, of space and six and a half feet wide. So also just the very upright exterior walls makes it easier for doing the cabinetry and, you know, just the whole construction process was a lot easier than having any curved walls and, you know, they make it, I mean, it's doable, but it just means a lot more time and effort to, to create it. So I had uh, these uh, beautiful walnut slabs of uh, wood that I had gotten at a, and also again, like the cedar at an auction years and years ago uh, that we had dragged around with this forever and uh, uh, was finally able to utilize it. So um, we, I used the two-part epoxy resin on it so it gives it this really nice, beautiful, deep, glowing uh, look to it. And I decided again, leave it live edge, you know, and you know, if you, if I would have had to cut this off to make it a, you know, a normal size, I would have lost all of this beautiful wood that's all along the edges on this. And I think it just looks so much nicer having all that, that nice natural feel to it. Um, and then again, the, the, the cedar is all, again, clear select cedar, solid boards. So this is, I mean, you know, it's not a cabinet with, you know, wood on the face and wood on the back and everything. This is actual solid wood. So one thing people have mentioned to ask a lot about is the weight wise. Cedar is extremely light and actually kind of soft, but so that, it's not an issue with that. And then the walnut is really only on the two countertops. So it's uh, not a crazy amount of weight that's uh, being added to the whole thing. But um, I used the same board for each of these things. This is one continuous board here. Um, each drawer, this is one continuous board that runs across here. And so I kind of kept it all in the, the, together. And then I made the, the, the door latches or the handles are all made out of the same walnut scraps that I had from the walnut here. And uh, this side here actually has a pull out uh, pantry cabinet so we can put our oils and vinegars and all that kind of fun stuff in there. And Robin can talk about that a little more in depth. But uh, um, we also were really crucial to have a Berkey. We really wanted to have that good pure water and 99.9% uh, .9 uh, purification on that. So we love that. And it's the sort of the smallest one that they make. So it's uh, I think a gallon and a half, I believe. And so that works out really nice. Again, with the height factor, um, I didn't want to, you know, super insulate and lose height and uh, with with being in here. But um, so the being a, a nice shuttle bus, it's got steel, uh, you know, supports basically running through the ceiling. So I insulated in between those, and then I put a piece of thin piece of insulation on each of those pieces of metal. Um, just a quarter inch of the Luon back underlayment uh, material is screwed in to those points. And then we got this grass cloth uh, wallpaper that we attached to the ceiling with a, the spray adhesive to spray both pieces. You'll leave it for a, you know, a couple minutes until it kind of gets dry to the touch, stick it on there. And so far it's holding up really well. And then where the joints were for that, um, it worked out real nice. I, sim I had more of the cedar left over as we were doing what we did. So I just made some nice thin slats and those so those cover the joints of the wallpaper and uh, create a real nice uh, finished touch for the ceiling so um, we like the wall the grass cloth it has again we had a a bit of an asian uh, kind of a inspiration for a lot of this and so um, we really felt like that had a nice nice look to it and simple rather than so many people using the cedar or you know different wood um, it kind of helps brighten it up and it also actually helps a little bit with the sound we've noticed as well that uh, kind of helps dampen the sound in here a little bit more as well uh, we wanted to have some you know both privacy as well as uh, control the heat uh, some more within the space here so i had some a bunch of different ideas but ended up settling on uh, these sh slide up shades that are uh, can set at different positions. Um, I can go to there, 
we can go up to there sort of I just wanted it to line up with the bottom of the the that point so we could still open the windows or if we want to we can basically whoops, take it all the way up and get some nice privacy but uh, we're finding out a few issues with our uh, wallpaper uh, we've been having some trouble with that but uh, but basically it's a simple simple design device to make sure that we can get some privacy and also keep a little bit of a control of our temperatures in the van. Uh, we also decided to go with cork flooring. Um, a lot of people use vinyl and uh, different ish, different types of flooring. We like the, the cork because it's kind of soft on, underfoot. Um, it was also fairly thin, so it wasn't, uh, again, taking up additional space for uh, our height in here. Um, and uh, another thing a lot of people I see do is they'll uh, completely do their flooring before they do their cabinets, before they do all of their other things. And what people don't, a lot of people don't understand is that things need to expand and contract. And if you put your cabinetry and everything right directly on these things, it locks them in place and they can't expand and contract again. And we've seen issues, a lot of people, where things start to pucker and buckle and you have a lot of issues with that. So something that uh, people need to realize is that best to, to actually do the flooring as one of the last things and give yourself some space on the side so that you can everything can expand and contract. And uh, that way, you know, you can do cork or vinyl or whatever you want and you can have a lot less potential issues. And the fact that it's not locked in, if for some reason we do need to take it out and redo it, it's, it's accessible. I can pop it right up without a lot of trouble. Pull a few little pieces of trim off here and there and I can take the whole floor out without any difficulty at all. So, so But so far it's been working out real nice and it's again nice and soft to the touch and, and uh, you know, again, kind of helps with sound as well. It seems like it uh, def dampens the sound a little bit in here as well. So Hey! So now we're in the kitchen. This is my space. I love to cook. One of the things when we were planning this kitchen was to make sure that we had enough storage for all of the tools that I needed, which are a lot of utensils, big deep drawers so we could fit all of the utensils. We can fit things like my big all clad um, kettle here, um, Dutch oven, can fit in this drawer with a whole bunch of other stuff. So the planning for storage was big because i had a lot of pans that i wanted to keep this is our cooking area right now you caught me in the middle of cooking i'm actually making some chili verde for dinner tonight for all the guys a lot of times when i see like rvs and stuff i see that they don't have counter space and so one thing when we planned this i wanted to make sure we had plenty of counter space for cooking so we have these two big counters here eric explained the the walnut slabs um, that are beautiful and incredibly functional um, if you'll notice, this counter is lower than this counter because we needed to have room to put, fit this painting, which was one of the things we were not going to leave behind in our sticks and bricks house. So we kind of designed around that, and so this, this counter is a lot lower, but it works out perfectly because it's a perfect height for the stove to work. So it all worked out good. Our Everest stove just fits right in this little drawer. We just put it right away when we're done, and so it's kind of nice and gets out of the way. We have this nice five pounder propane it lasts forever we just got it filled we've been using it for about a month and we'd only used a pound so and i cook every day so and we do coffee every day so i thought that was a really great when eric found that it was kind of expensive to find the the tanks are expensive but then once you get them they're so cheap to fill and those little one pounder ones just don't last i don't know what it is they just they don't have a pound of propane in there so when we did this we wanted it to look really clean and lines and so eric used like he explained this is all one board this is all one board they all match so when we put the fridge in we had to figure out since it's chest style how are we going to fit it in how is it going to work so eric devised this great way to just kind of bring that down and pull it out he put it on 500 pound slides so it's got lots of structure under there to hold it up and so we have the big 64 cubic foot i'm surprised at how much i can get in there so we you know this is you can have a de designated freezer fridge whichever side right now we both have both sides fridge because that's what's working best for us right now and because we had do have a battery issue when we have it on freezer it's using more energy so but we have them kind of low and so right now it's working out great i haven't had any issues with um food food spoiling or anything like that um i yeah i'm surprised how much stuff i can actually i mean i can i fit so much stuff in here <laughs> i mean it's just packed with all kinds of yummy stuff i mean i've got two dozen eggs under here tons of cheese cilantro my lard that i take with me everywhere 
Yeah, this is a winter fridge, and usually this and the Dometic are the two main ones that people buy. We decided this one because it has a, at the time I don't know if Dometic's changed, but it has its own designated compressor for the freezer. So each of these have their own, it's a dual compressor fridge. Uses a little bit more energy, but you're able to make ice cubes and really freeze stuff. So that's what we liked about it. So, and this was a little, this was kind of the glitch of trying to figure out, because these are weird handles. You know, a lot of the other ones, they just kind of come up. But since we had to do this little clip thing, Eric had to kind of, all of like our oils and vinegars and the small little spices fit down there, so that looked out good. I actually think this is a really easy to kitchen to cook with. It's like, it's not a triangle, it's a, it's a do-angle. You know, I mean, you just have the sink, the fridge, and the, and the stove. It's just galley kitchen style, but I like small kitchens as long as there's enough space to work. So Eric made me this awesome, this is my cutting board. This is actually made from the cutting board that we had in our apartment. So, and it just, you know, I just, everything fits on here. I have plenty of space to work here. And then I have the stove over here. It's actually a really great working um, situation. So I've been really surprised at how I've been able to adapt really easily. So this was funny because I originally was trying to talk Eric out of having a sink at all. Because I was thinking, oh, we'll just have like our water thing, like so minimalist. <laughs> we'll just have our water thing up high and then we'll have buckets that we can bring out and do that. And, and I was like, I almost had him convinced. I was pretty, pretty, getting pretty good. But then when we decided, well, maybe we do want to get hot water tank. Maybe we do want to do all that. You know, I think what we, what we ended up doing was going from kind of minimal to, well, if I'm going to have a sink then I'm gonna have a, a really good sink. And so this actually is, I think, the same sink we had in our apartment that we lived in before this. And I loved the size and I loved the sink. And so we just got the same sink. And I have to say, it's very dirty right now, but as you can see, it, you can fit a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> so, you know, if you need to kind of cover things up, if people are coming, it's nice and deep. Um, and for being out here, I, I use big pans, I use big bowls, and so it actually, it's really functional for me. I really like it a lot. And then we just got this really easy, um, we just have the uh, a little pump, pump action. It's got the dual thing. So we don't have a shower right now, but, a but eventually we're gonna get a hot water heater and we would be able to take this and just stick it outside. And if we wanted to wash our hair or, what, or do any kind of like quick shower out there. So that's kind of why we got that style of, of faucet. So we'd be able to use that. So we have no blank tank since we have a composting toilet. We have 115 gallon, which isn't very much, but we have found with a few extra gallons, we found that we can boondock for like five days on that. So we, I guess we conserve water pretty well. 15 gallon tank, it kind of goes from the closet into the bottom of this side of the cabinet under there. We have a gray tank that runs on this side of the bus and it's about a 12 gallon gray tank. The only thing I use it for is for washing dishes. So we don't really have anything that we pour down there that's, and I use a non-toxic environmentally friendly soap and stuff. So we don't really, we don't, we try and keep it as minimal as possible. These are a little hinky, so we have to keep these tightened. But because the cedar is such a soft wood, we had to have a, a hinge that wasn't too much stress on the, the wood itself because it is pretty soft. But so, but my solution for these kinds of things are bins. These things work great. So I just put everything in bins. So I kind of have our clothes are kind of up here. As you can see, it's kind of stuffed in here. But it helps organize, you know, all of the stuff. And Eric's got kind of his basket, camera stuff extra stuff and so these stay they close really well when we're traveling and to me the bin thing just works really well so that's just how we organize stuff so all of our coffee this. glasses ice stuff co cocktail stuff all the condiments snacks you know so we kind of have a then we got these hanging baskets at the thrift store with this weird little lock on it that we just kept on there because it was weird um we love our max air fan it's awesome. It's basically our stove fan. So it's our vent hood, um, which works really well. I accidentally set off our smoke alarm today because I was toasting some chilies and that kind of gets smoky. But the fan took it right away and it works really well. I love this. It's like a 10 speed. So we can just kind of, we need it to be higher. 74 degrees in here. You can program it to whatever temperature you want. Eric's just putting up some rope lights. We're just, um, He's gonna install them, but we finally found the kinds that we want that are fitting up here. So this is kind of like, we got wires kind of going right here, but eventually those will be 
behind and hidden. A, an old friend of mine found this pair in the thrift store, like the Goodwill store in Santa Cruz, California, when we first moved in together. We found out later from an antique dealer that they're like from 17th century. <laughs> And so they're worth like a ton of money. But the night of the earthquake, the quake of 89, somebody stole the other one of our, we had two of these candle holders and it was gone forever. Someone took it because we had no power. So everyone had candles and someone took off with our candle. But anyway, that's why we kept that. It's kind of like a, an old reminder. Okay. So kitchen here. And then we have our lounge area here. Um, we wanted something that we could fit several people. I think we can maybe fit about six people kind of comfortably sitting. Um, the table makes it a little bit harder, maybe four or five. Um, we have this awesome table that Eric made for us. It's made out of uh, reclaimed redwood and then he edged it with some of the walnut that he used for the countertops. Um, and then we have this lagoon table leg that we put it on that's really, I love this thing because you can kind of just put it out of the way if you need to or just bring it in for eating or working. It's great. I play, eat, sleep area. Our bed is super easy to make. All we do is take off the table, take off this little leg, which is a couple of little things and you just pull it right off. It's super easy. And Eric made these slats that basically just go right across. And then a couple of these pillows fit perfectly in there and we have our queen size bed. We keep all of our bedding very easily down here. He has this so that it can open up. Just grab it from out here and boom. And a lot of people go, oh, you have to make your bed every night. And I, you know, it can be a little bit of a pain after you've had way too many drinks, but usually <laughs> we're pretty good. So it takes us maybe five minutes. So we looked on YouTube. I don't sew. And so we used fabric glue. Um, we found the material that we liked. We um, got a king sized five inch memory foam gel mattress. We got a king size because we wanted to cut some extra off to make extra, extra cushions for the back. Eric actually took one of those turkey knives, electric knives, cut it into the pieces that we needed it to be. And then we found this um, green velvet fabric. And then I had, I just, we figured out how to cut it and glue it and staple it onto the back. Eric put like a little, little really thin piece of plywood onto the back. And so that's how we secured our cushions. Very, very minimalist and simple. And since neither of us sewed, it was kind of like the, the way to go for us. And they're holding up really good. Um, I'm amazed at this fabric. I've spilled red wine on this stuff and I can't even tell where. Um, so we lucked out with that. Um, Fabric.com and it was just a green velvet. We, we just bought it because we liked the color and we liked the texture, so. But um, it seems like it has some really good stain resistance to it too, which we're really happy about. Because in a situation like this, I'm cooking right here, we're sleeping right here, stuff is just flying everywhere. It just is, that's how it is. You know, that's one of the things about bus life, especially short bus life. Um, Eric did amazing trim detail. I love all of his trim. So he used like these little pieces of walnut to kind of, so we can put stuff on our shelves so they don't fall out when we're, when we're traveling. That's one thing that people find out quick if you're in bus life. Another kip with a piece of, of artwork from our friend Mitchell. And this is just another, we picked up at an art, art show, I think in Madison a long time ago. When we, you know, we felt really lucky to find a bus that had, we have a back door. So this door opens and these doors open. We park, we design the whole design so that these doors, we would be able to have, this would be our view. So whenever we park somewhere, this is, this is how we usually situate ourselves. We've had some incredible views already just in the three months that we've been at this. But um, yeah, these doors are just awesome. I just love them. They're, they make the whole, it's like, it brings that, that, the outside in. So you can be sitting in your bus and you feel like you're kind of outside, which I just love sitting in here. Um, Cause sometimes if it's windy or something, I'd rather be inside than outside. So yeah, well maybe this is kind of funny. Okay, so when Eric designed this, he was really, he really wanted to make sure that I had a cubby so that I could put stuff, you know, next to me when I'm in, my, in bed or in the couch. The funny thing is though, since Eric sleeps on this side, he has nothing to put his stuff in. <laughs> so we'll wake up and there'll be, there will be a, a balancing glass of wine <laughs> sitting like literally between the door of the thing that he, he managed not to spill while he slept all night long. In fact, we found one this morning, didn't we? Yep. That's amazing. <laughs>
<laughs> it was pretty amazing. So he's talented that way, but I keep telling him he, he needs to make himself a cubby or something to put, you know, I don't care, put a shelf here, do something. This was happenstance. It didn't really happen. It just ha worked out this way, but I love how the countertop is the same height as the couch. We did not plan that, but somehow it just worked out that way. And I just love how that makes, for me, makes a really clean line. I just like how that worked. Yeah, when we were going for the design, we were going for really simple, clean lines, um, comfortable space, warm, inviting. You know, we wanted it to be a place where people could come, like you said, play cards, play a game, hang out, eat, have fun, live, be free. All right, so as you enter the bus, the uh, driver's seat is right here, obviously. This bus did not have a passenger seat or anything. It was all just the, you know, all of the seats from the back. So we uh, bought a uh, jump seat to add to the, so that whoever's not driving can be up front and in uh, closer to the action. Um, it also did not have a window here. It was all enclosed. There was one kind of storage container sort of thing right about here with some safety gear in it. And uh, um, I was able to find this window on eBay for $40 and uh, was able to do a install on that. And then a big part of all of this as well was the cedar wood that I had. Um, I got all of this solid clear cedar uh, wood at an auction 15, 18 years earlier and uh, was taking it around with us forever and so uh, finally had a nice place to put it and uh, so I've been able to trim everything out in this really beautiful wood. I've also repurposed a fair amount of material. There's some material, there's um, the doors of the, this is actually uh, the old electrical uh, panel from the original bus and uh, so we actually utilize some of that power uh, on the old system and then also have new stuff but had this beautiful redwood from an old uh, little tiny bookcase and <laughs> tore that apart and I uh, was able to reutilize some of that. Yeah, the other thing that we've found, we typically like to face south. Um, our solar panels are on the roof right above here, so it maximizes our, our solar that way. But we found that this is warms up quite a bit in this area here. Um, so if it's a particularly warm outside, we can just open the windows, let that air just blow right through. But right now, when the nights are getting down into the 40s and even in the high 30s, this area warms up really fast in the morning. And so we've been using this handy little simple USB fan, and we'll clip it either here or up on the top this way and just aim it right back and we can just blow that nice warm air that's generating in this area into the back and it helps warm up the back of the van a little faster and and kind of even out the temperatures uh, throughout everything. One of our big focuses was our art. We didn't want to give up a lot of the art that we had collected over the years and so uh, all of our walls space was perfect for some of our art and we had this uh, nice old piece that we don't know who the who the artist was i got that from an uncle way back years and years ago and uh, but we always loved it so we found a spot for that and uh, you'll see shortly a few of our other pieces in the back there um, we had a lot of magnets from different uh, national parks and different places it was one of those easy simple things to collect you know when you're out uh, hitting all those great locations and so uh, one of the weird things about this, most buses and schoolies are steel and there's steel everywhere so magnets work, but this is a, being a shuttle bus, it's mostly fiberglass, so there wasn't as much steel. So I actually put a piece of steel on both sides by the entrance here so that we could stick these, some of our older uh, magnets that we had already collected and then we'll have room for more as we go uh, to keep adding to the collection as we uh, travel the rest of the country. And, and again, like a lot of people, we do have a plan to try to hit every national park in the, in the, in the country at some point in time. So. I think we've hit 15 or 16 of them so far in our uh, lives, so we've uh, planning to definitely get to all of those. But So we decided to separate the front from the back somewhat. I mean, a lot of people like a totally open plan. Some people have things really enclosed. I'm a big Frank Lloyd Wright fan, so one of his things was to have a sort of a tight enclosed entry area and then opening up to a bigger space and that way it makes that space feel even more open and larger so being a fairly small space overall uh, was a good way to deal with that so and then we also needed a closet and we have our our uh, little dry bathroom that we have here so I created the the bathroom on this side closet on this side uh, the closet has also has the solar controls and all the everything in the back of the closet and uh, so um, one of the big things that I, seeing all the builds that people do out there, a lot of people use a two by two for their wall construction. They put something on both sides of the wall. So you end up with, you know, three, three and a half inches of thickness lost. We wanted to maximize the space. So I created these walls with just the three quarter inch uh, tongue and groove 
uh, pine and then I used the three-quarter uh, aluminum channels and it worked out perfectly that the three-quarter material is not actually three-quarters thick anymore these days so it just fit perfectly right in the slot of the U between for the metal so basically I was able to create these wall channels or the walls with only taking up less than an inch of space on each side so it maximized the space and also eliminated a good chunk of weight from all that additional framing that we could have been stuck with so well, we created a bathroom on this side. Um, uh, we have our own composting toilet uh, that I actually also created based on uh, uh, the sea head kind of design. Um, and uh, basically, for the cost of ordering uh, the diverter between for the solids and the liquids, um, it's uh, basically only cost us about $150 to create a really great functional composting toilet um, that uh, uh, does the trick there and we've got uh, just a simple curtain uh, right now to separate the space out from the rest of it but um, it's got uh, I use some more of the walnut for the toilet seat and uh, we've got a little privacy shade that'll helps to keep things you know a little more private in that area when you need a little of the privacy but uh, so far it's been working really well and then I had additionally some more of the cedar and the, the walnut for some of the details as well as some of the uh, paracord for uh, helping keep things in place and from shifting and flying around on us when we're moving around. We actually did the, the no shower route and we actually got the Planet Fitness membership for you know the $25 a month deal for the two of us and so you know we just keep an eye out for where they're located and then we also use the you know county parks and truck stops and you know things like that as well as you know a lot of the time we'll just do the the wipes you know the different kinds of cleaning wipes that are out there and uh, um, you know again one of the we were the type of people that only took a shower typically once a week uh, before we started all this so it, it, now it's it really wasn't that big of a transition to to still do it now um, as long as I don't get too terribly dusty and dirty or if we're out hiking and we get really dirty um, you know but typically we take about a week at a time a week and a half sometimes before between showers but uh, we can always find one nearby somewhere so yeah yeah that was another thing again this area was all uh, just you know solid roof so having the the closets here and enclosed um, we decided to get the simple uh, opaque uh, little skylight it's just a curved uh, top I, mean, I think it was only like $35 on Amazon and uh, that way it gives us a really nice natural light right here as we're transitioning into the space oh and one nice little perk that we discovered was um, we, we bought this handy little little mirror that's kind of people a lot of people have but it works out really well that with the natural light right here it's great for shaving and uh, taking care of that sort of thing and uh, Robin can do her hair and makeup and whatever and have good natural light so it worked out as a nice little uh, a nice little perk that I, I'd like to say I planned, but uh, it just happened to work out that way. But uh, but yeah, so the closet again, it's a little overpacked. Uh, we're discovering like many people that uh, we're, we've got way more stuff than we need. Uh, we, we brought a lot more and we got rid of a 90 plus percent of what we had. And uh, you know, we're finding that we're still only wear, you know wearing barely 10% of it. You know, we've got a couple of nicer things for if we happen to be wanting to go out to dinner somewhere and then when we're in a nicer town, and but uh, we'll be purging a few more things here in the near future to uh, make more room and also just have plenty of airflow and have things good for the solar system that's all in there so but uh, but yeah the inverter is back in here and uh, the charge controller all the different solar controls are all uh, back the the way that I built the the seat we have a jog in the wall and so there, that creates a nice little space in the back area there that uh, all that stuff fits in and doesn't uh, take up as much space into where the clothing and stuff is and we have two uh, 100 watt panels up on the roof right above here um, they're the, the thin flexible panels and they're actually adhered to the roof with uh, Eternabon tape um, so we didn't have to put additional screws into the roof and create more places that could leak down the road and uh, everything then you know um, we also have a 136 watt flexible panel that we're able to move around and get the maximum amount of sun angles and uh, uh, say, between the two on the roof and that one we are generating a you know good well we did a whole kilowatt of power one day recently so we're uh, pretty happy with the production especially down here in the southwest right now where you get a good hot nice sunny days and plenty of sunlight so uh, right now we just have a 100 amp hour AGM battery um, that uh, we're working on another system that I'll uh, be revealing hopefully in the near future that uh, is got with a lithium iron phosphate battery uh, that'll that'll have almost 400 amp hours or close to 400 amp hours of power 
storage. So, um, so in the meantime, we're just kind of limping by a little bit with 100 amps of uh, AGM power, which is just getting us enough for our refrigerator and for uh, everything. But we've, we've, we're dialing it in pretty well, knowing, you know, finding out exactly how much we need for the fridge and just a few other things. It's most of the time it's just charging our, our, you know, phones, laptops, and all that, and a few LED lights. So it's, uh, we're trying to keep it as simple and as, uh, as low tech as we can. So, all right. So the exterior of the van is still uh, very much a work in progress. Uh, we've been uh, slowly moving along as we uh, mainly focusing everything on the inside. We did get this awning uh, back a couple months back now and uh, it's an eight foot by eight foot awning that works out really nicely. Uh, it's been real windy so we haven't been putting it up the last few nights or the last few days but it's uh, been really great. And as you covered from the interior we've got these uh, where the, the handicap access door was. And uh, we just love to open it up and have, you know, nice, nice access for the, we, again, we always try to aim this angle towards the west typically for the nice sunsets, you know, and so um, we've had some pretty awesome ones. We ended up once in one of the nights, one place in Colorado where literally the edge of the hill was right here and it dropped down about 20 feet to a creek right below us right here. So if we would have fell out, you would have been real wet real fast. So that was kind of the, probably the most uh, sketchy spot we were parked with it, but uh, we just love taking advantage of it and having the, uh, you know, the, the Instagram ready, uh, you know, uh, view from out our windows here, our doors. A lot of people ask about the our little rack on top um, that actually were those were the stainless steel tubes that were the dividers inside the shuttle that separated the the handicap door here from the seats and up at the front behind the driver's seat and uh, as I was demoing everything I was thinking these are beautiful stainless steel tubes and all these nice parts so I just threw everything in a bucket and held on to it and as we we're finishing up the construction I'm thinking boy what a you know what I think I can find a use for those so literally every part that the parts that used to stick into the under the floor were the ones I used on the roof and all the things that connected everything together and it worked out literally I used every single piece that uh, that came out <laughs> went right back up on the roof so yeah and I love this the stainless steel and and right now we don't have anything up there but it is nice to, to have that overflow of storage up on the roof we've had a few mishaps uh, as we mentioned earlier most of the were th mechanically the engine's been great um, we had an issue with blowing a couple of tires near Moab and this did have a big plastic you know fender flare over it that uh, when the tires blew that delaminated and busted most of that out there was a little tiny piece left about right here and it bent up our back part here and so uh, phase two of the process will be to uh, actually eliminate most of this lower stuff and we're going to add, add some storage boxes underneath here and you know get it uh, additional storage and make it look a lot better. <laughs> right now uh, we added the kitchen area, the sink is right here and the closet with the electrical and stuff is here. The 15 gallon freshwater tank sits kind of be straddles between the closet and under, under this cabinet so uh, we added the water fill here and it's one of those that you know can do the can hook up to water at a RV park or a campground and we've done that a few times we typically boondock but we like to you know every once in a while you kind of need to, to if you can utilize some showers or some other things in a park. No, we don't have any kind of direct shore power uh, connection. We basically, again, everything is so simple. Our The inverter is right inside the closet right here. And, uh, but the few times when we have, I've got an extension cord and we've been in a park and just to run to the, if we want to hook the fridge up to that for a little bit to kind of take, give the, give the battery a break, we can do that. But otherwise, you know, exterior wise, we haven't done anything. We're looking at some different colors and different things. Uh, this had those, uh, the big mirrors that used to mount that kind of sit up here on the front of a lot of buses and those are essentially to keep kids safe out in front of the bus so we got rid of those so I've got some grinding and some things to get rid of on uh, all, all of these parts we actually also we do have cameras that we put in uh, that we still have to complete the connections for all of that as well but we've got both cameras on the front and um, both sides and the backup one in the back so just need a little more a little more connections to get all that finished up but again the skylight we are the window we added up front there again on the roof there's the two 100 watt flexible panels up on the roof up on top and you again I like the, the flexible ones because of that real low profile you really don't even hardly know they're up there unless you're up up looking at them right and again no drilling turn a bond tape gotta love that stuff 
and this is the the you know the compressor for the air conditioning and, and heating which we did still have uh, connected up inside so you know a lot of people like to rip all that out and uh, you know start from scratch um, it was all still working really well so we figured why why ruin it there was one additional of uh, the little heaters that sort of sat underneath one of the seats about here on the other side we did get rid of that one just because that was where the the bathroom wall was going so but again this was what the other side looked like and these are just plastic and you know this one's as you can see is also damaged so we'll be replacing that putting some boxes underneath and uh, finishing that all out and making it look a little little nicer for the for the long term and we're still deciding on a color for everything as well we're kind of leaning towards maybe a silver or a gray kind of a look around for things when we get there so cool. well the bus's name is woo <laughs> w-o-o and it came out of a lot of different things mostly because we're deadwood fans and woo was our favorite character <laughs> and so we can say woo swear engine woo. but no and woo is just it's it was, it was kind of short for wuda because it's made out of wood and then we have a lot of buddha references with our with our bus so it kind of like came from there and then we just decided to call it woo because it it's fun to say. Yeah. Well, and I was just going to say when we kind of decided when the Sprinter thing was becoming, we started to look at them and we had go, gone to see a few and they were just in really bad shape for really expensive prices. And, and we had, when we had decided to kind of shift our paradigm of what was possible, this thing was just came up on Craigslist. And so it was almost like the vehicle kind of came to us, which almost like, oh, well, we could do that instead yeah. kind of thing. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go look for a shuttle bus or I'm going to go look for it. It just kind of came yeah, to us. Funny. It was literally it was like a, a two days, two yeah. or three days, you know, we were thinking sprinter, sprinter, sprinter. And then all of a sudden yeah. we were like, well, what about something like this? And then it was like, well, hey, there's one in, <laughs> right outside of Chicago. Oh, yeah. Let's go so take a look. Oh, let's it. buy it. You know, so yeah. it was like, so we paid $3,000 for this. It's only 118,000 miles on a good diesel engine. So um, the six liter diesel, I know some people have issues with the six liter, but as long as you keep the coolant, uh, you know, flushed and clean it uh, they, they they're fantastic and we've had I guess we'll find out if we have issues with the six liter yeah I mean we've been up and down up and down the mountains all over the west here for the last three months and it's got great power and it just handles perfectly we've had no issues with mechanically we've have haven't had any issues we've had a few other things with tires and a couple other things right. but uh, but otherwise it's been uh, it's been great yeah. Loved it. Yeah. I mean, and it is coming from the Midwest, so it had a little bit more rust probably than some units yeah. that people can find, but uh, but nothing too horrible and uh, was able to... I mean, I admit, we were impulsive up. when we bought it. We're like 3000 I mean, he was asking 3500 Eric's like, will you take 3000 The guy's like, yeah. We're like, okay, well, then I guess we have our bus now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, I mean, we jumped in and maybe, you know, we could have done more research and, you know, had it checked out more, but... So that was a little over That's kind of how we are. We just kind of jump th jump into stuff. We're a little impulsive and yeah. sometimes it works out great. Sometimes we have to, you know, adjust, but yeah. that's okay. Yeah, and that was a little over a year ago in November. And uh, so we were kind of planning to do this over the course of the winter and get rolling into it. And then uh, I ended up getting laid off in December of last year. So it worked out almost kind of good because I was able to spend yeah. some a few months just totally prepping and watching YouTube videos and uh, learning all about all the different configurations and all the different things that I needed to know. And, and then, uh, you know, then jumped right into it in the spring and uh, had we didn't have a place to build so Eric literally built it at the storage unit <laughs> yeah. and used the house batteries on the van to, to power the, the power saw yeah. and the table saw yeah, and all little, of this stuff. A little different. But it's and we thought experience. he killed the batteries but they're still working great so that was kind of a surprise to us. But, yeah, 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 they held up pretty well. You know, it's yeah. kind of done on the fly in all kinds of respects. We had all the wood and stuff which was cool which yeah. we'll get to later but. Yeah. All right, well that's been our van. I hope everyone uh, it got something out of this and enjoyed uh, seeing our, our workmanship and uh, the things that we've created and again our whole idea was to have a, a really comfortable warm space to for us to hang around in and you know there are times filled, when uh, filled with the things that we loved that we weren't willing to give up yeah, so yeah took them with us if it is uh if we are stuck with three four days of rain or anything we have a beautiful comfortable space that we can relax and hang out in and still feel comfortable you know and not be feeling like we're trapped in some tight little space you know and yeah, yeah we really love the fact that again, the shuttle bus having the windows all the way around gives us a you know beautiful views and all these places that we love to visit so yeah i'm really happy we went with the shuttle bus i mean i, I really we would have had to i think 
I, I think it just worked out perfectly for us in terms of our materials and how we wanted to live and how we wanted to, to exist in the space. So I think it just worked out the best that it could have. So happy, happy, two more happy nomads. Okay, well, we have a YouTube channel. It's Wanderboom, uh, W-A-N-D-E-R space B-O-O-M. Uh, my name is Vanderboom. So I, we just changed the V to a W and uh, that's where it worked out perfect. We just we love to wander, and uh, so uh, the, the wander boom is on. Yep. <laughs> wander booming with woo. Wander, and yes, and uh, Instagram is wander booming. Um, just add an ing to it, and that's where we are there. And uh, um, I'm also doing uh, van building and uh, bus building as a side business. Um, it's business is called Eric and His Tools. Uh, gave that a great deal of thought to figure out that really really tricky name. But uh, you, if you need to contact us or like to contact us about any work that you'd like to have done uh, with beautiful countertops or nice uh, wood trim work or or a whole bus build, uh, you can meet, reach us at uh, Eric and His Tools at gmail dot com. You can contact us that way, and uh, yep. we can uh, see what we can do. So everything is linked. Linked down below. Down below. <laughs>